now this is what I used to have and this is what I might have I'm not totally approved yet but they give me the, the confidence it will be approved so they give me the vehicle to take home because they don't want me to drive the Hellcat in case I get into an accident or something but this is super nice little Jeep so Compass uh, Trailhawk so they even give you floor mats and these are folding it's not very big but these fold and this will be perfect for my uh, for my guns of course it has this remote thing here for the trunk so 4x4 all-wheel drive has the towing capability right hooks trail hawk so nice color and it's trail rate it has uh, plates underneath to protect the the fuel tank transmission stuff like that so leather inside so it's a pretty nice nicely equipped vehicle huge uh, display here so they changed the um, the transmission uh, this is 23 they changed the transmission and they changed the uh, engine so the 22 models were equipped with a 9-speed auto and these ones have these ones have uh, eight eight speed and also the engine now is uh, two liter four cylinder turbo which is better on gas and has much higher torque and horsepower than uh, the previous models and it has all this nice things over here see four wheel drive lock you can go low and that's how you change here uh, the wheel drive from auto you can go into different modes so parking brake it has a charger wireless charger for the phone but here it's pretty much the same like a typical chrysler vehicle except there's no i'm used to the trunk button being here and it's not yeah, same here you see uh, do we have air conditioning? Uh, I think it should be automatic. Pretty sure it's uh, automatic. Probably it's on that thing. I didn't check it out yet. Sorry? Right. I'm just going to move this into one of the tents. Just to keep protected, okay? Okay. okay. Just let me know if you need help with the buttons. Okay. Putting it under the um, under the canopy, just to make sure it's just to make sure in case some bad weather happens. But yeah, we didn't we couldn't get uh, so uh, what happened in the morning. Uh, there was still no answer from the Chevy. I really like that truck, Chevy Silverado. You know, nice truck, but at sixty one thousand plus, you know the gap what i owe on the hellcat and what they were offering as a trade-in it was a bit too much of a of a deal and so we we couldn't get approved except one bank one bank said okay with a co-sign i said forget it who's gonna co-sign you know and then they were still waiting for the third bank these three banks were offering a preferred rate like 199 interest and there was still nothing in the morning this morning so i sent them an email i said okay guys i'm gonna cancel this okay i said um the, the it's too much money that's why they cannot approve me because you know now this year my income of course is less than last year when i was trucking um that's why i said i'm pulling out just let me know how do i get my thousand dollars back that i gave him a deposit and uh and my sales guy who sold me the hellcat he was on vacation and i emailed him a couple of days ago and he says he'll be in on thursday and so i'm sitting at home i go to the east this is uh, uh east side dodge chrysler right this is where i bought my hellcat and uh 
I, I booked a test drive online because I saw this they have this you know this nice little Jeep that I wasn't even aware that the you know I, I know those bigger Jeeps right and Jeep Wrangler but I'm not too familiar with this Jeep Costa uh, compass but look at this it's very nicely done you know, very good interior so leather again you see like especially with this trail hook like this start here in Canada like the basic compass it's like 32,000 Canadian right this one by the time you get to Trailhawk this is like four or five trims above the basic one this is um, about 49 50 grand you know except this one they, they asked me they said do you need the sunroof I said honestly I don't care about sunroofs I never use them because as soon as you open it the Sun you know hits your my bald head and like I'm not a, sometimes I open it at slow speeds you know but it's just it's a fancy uh, fancy you know wa waste of money basically and they said okay if you don't need the sunroof we have this and so this uh, when they brought this for a test drive and that's what I did I said I want to do a test drive for 12 o'clock today with Steven with my sales guy and he gave me this brand new uh, the odometer showed six kilometers six kilometers I said man and I like this of course this is not electric you see like the difference on the Hellcat the telescopic uh, action was all electric here the seats are electric lumbar support uh, of course the speaker system on the Hellcat it's like uh, 18 speakers with a subwoofer here I think it's six speakers but at least you get because now there's no subwoofer you get a full-size uh, spare tire and oh and the difference in uh, between the trail hook and the basic version also this this is really uh, f uh, rated for off-road I wouldn't say like serious but at least mild off-road so this is definitely will work uh, for my trips to the public land to do some target practice and trail hook I think it's either one inch or two inches uh, I think one inch uh, taller the, like the ground clearance is is more than on a basic version and this had uh, this has uh, skid plates like I mentioned under the transmission uh, fuel tank and uh, engine right and I'm not a big fan of the wheels like the wheels are oh and it's still look it still has uh, memory settings like I'm not a big fan of the wheels like 17 inch tires but these are designed specifically for off-road because they are more narrow right so they they're better on snow but the wheels are nice nice wheels these are like premium black wheels but this is 215 by 65 by 17 so but you know if if i get this vehicle i'll just probably get um, winter tires in winter but this would be perfect for my hiking trips my hiking trips to the mountains my target practice trips to the public land and this will be much safer in winter than than the Hellcat and another cool thing is that I don't know if you can see this but this Jeep has much larger pockets so where finally my phone can go in here which is super convenient you know when you need some directions all right let's go let's go home so for now this is the vehicle I'm supposed to buy but since the bank has not approved me yet they, they just put their dealer plate on it check this out Oh, and I like at the bottom there it says one two three four five like the tachometer is digital but for some reason the um, it still shows off the collision system oh it has navigation navigation vehicle because they cleaned up everything like before nothing worked even like remote did not work or surround camera oh wow, look at this yeah, oh yeah that's another cool thing that I didn't even have on a Hellcat it's uh, it's uh, gives you top view rear view man it's like a best cameras under the mirrors and in the front so you get you get 
clock and date well I'll do it later set time see over here heated seats yeah, it has heated seats it has a heated steering wheel uh, ventilated seats so like I said it's a previous very nicely equipped because it's a oh 446 is that correct yeah they already set up the time oh comfort let's see I was curious if it has uh, oh yeah it has. it has temperature so it's automatic climate control and just set it off let's say 20 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius here see perfect I like this automatic climate control uh, auto I always do auto and it should give me should give me um, Oh, 18 out I don't know why are we doing this 18 degrees out I said I want 20 inside and it's cold well do we have serious yeah we have serious radio that's what I like about oh that's what it is off but it still shows over there anyway let's go so first drive so this has 26 kilometers and when I got it when I got behind the wheel it had six right so I put 20 kilometers because we did a circle Head east toward 36th Street, northeast, south. oh and one thing I don't like is that this thing has a uh, has, uh, start and stop I'm not a big fan of this but it's good for good for good for fuel economy very nice very nice uh, typeface on the on the odometer like very modern and then of course I can I can um, adjust all this like now top left shows uh, direction s for south I usually like to see temperature so I'm gonna change that to temperature this is what I should have bought you know when I when I moved here when I gave him the charger I should have gotten something like this that's what I need a small Jeep all-wheel drive but the brakes on the Hellcat are, are much stronger than on this because those are those performance brakes this just has regular brakes so I'm gonna show you guys slight left for Memorial Drive then use any lane to turn left onto Memorial Drive 
basically my first trip but imagine how nice use any lane to turn left onto memorial drive how nice this dealer is to give me a car without me being approved oh yeah we'll have to ch change this like now it uh, the pressure tire pressure shows in bar <laughs> so then I'll have to go here and change settings for Imperial oh actually I think I can cancel that um, stop and stop and start but actually that's what most modern cars have this So yeah, now we uh, these guys are in the middle of Calgary. So now we we're turning east or left on Memorial Drive, and the steering wheel is very comfortable with this very nice stitching. It's all leather, except on the Hellcat I had the, like a more straight a couple of sections here, more straight, made from aluminum. But overall, like the dash. It's very nicely done. Why is it blowing cold air? I don't understand. Like it's 18 degrees out, right? Like why do you need... Okay. Something like this. And it's still cold. So yeah, spent whole day here. So I was here at 12 o'clock and uh, talked to Steve and then it took him a while to find the car. Continue on Memorial Drive for three kilometers. Because they have a huge inventory. And I, I like turbo, of course, a five, uh, regular eight cylinder would be better, it's more reliable, but this thing, it has 300 pounds of torque, I think, no, maybe a bit less, but still, for such, you know, it's such a light vehicle, it's, uh, turbo is super nice, it picks up speed real easy, and we have two cup holders here, whereas on the Hellcat I had only one. And like I said, I like this, that I can finally put my phone in here. On the Hellcat, I had to put it in here, in front of the shifter. Oh, and this thing also comes with a manual. Like if I shift it to the left, I can change the gears by myself. And it's funny that I owned so many vehicles and I never had an SUV you know I just had basically sedans or two-door cars or I had uh, two pickup trucks I got a Ford F-150 and I had uh, a Ram 1500 like standard cab I like those but they were not very good on gas So this on a freeway is rated for 7.2 liters per 100 kilometers. And so yeah, the dealer gave me the car without me being approved because they, they feel so confident that I'll be approved and, and they're saying they don't understand themselves how like with a Hellcat, my payments were, monthly payments were about 45% higher per month. Like this is still expensive, but not, not because of the vehicle. Like this is about 50 grand, 51 Canadian. Oh, and 
I like that so this also has that quick signal feature where you can just touch the lever and it blinks three times I always use it on the Hellcat yeah very comfortable I like this and one another thing I found with the Hellcat it's 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 kind of like ridiculous I knew this before I bought it that because it's such an expensive car you know you cannot put too many miles or kilometers on it right because then the value you want to sell it at some point right or you want to keep it in good in good shape so you are afraid it's such a nice car but you are afraid to drive it like I wanted to go to Toronto right when I was buying this forklift but it's 3500 kilometers and so I figured yeah I can go it would be in like a dream road trip but by the time I get back to Calgary the odometer would have 7,000 kilometers more you know and I talked to a couple of people everybody says no that's not a good idea so you see I have a nice car I cannot drive it right so I just went I did a couple of trips as you remember I went to see my friend in uh, Nisku Edmonton right away that's like a round trip it's like 750 kilometers you know and then I did the trip to uh, Lake Louise a couple of weekends ago right so that added 200 clicks one way so 400 clicks you know so now the Hellcat has 3100 something 50 kilometers and I still until they approve me I still have the ads going on Kijiji Canada and on even Craigslist and Facebook still trying to sell it where are we going well, I think now we're good we'll be turning left somewhere here. and also uh, another important thing is happening today the place where I parked the the forklift and the guy who was helping remember that video uh, forklift recovery where uh, we damaged the the ramps hookup on the trailer right and so they were stuck and we couldn't un uncouple them and so one of the guys there had a shop inside the storage place and he came out with a cutter just for 20 bucks he cut whatever needed to be cut so so that the step that guy step that guy can go home and so somebody from that shop in 300 meters turn left onto 68th street northeast so they saw this forklift right and this they they were asking the manager who Turn left onto 68th Street Northeast. They were asking the manager who owns it. Because I talked to the manager, the guy says he's offering you uh four thousand bucks. <laughs> Canadian. I said no, that's not enough. Continue uh, on 68th Street Northeast for one and a half kilometers. I said, can you do a bit better on the price? And they said no. But he says I can pull it out out of the sand because it's stuck in there right because I can pull it out of the sand and I'll give you cash and then he I said no that's too low he says okay last offer 4500 Canadian <laughs> and I started talking to uh, the auction the same auction oh I started talking to the auction here because there's a huge auction in Edmonton coming up and it, it'll have like 8,000 items you know and I talked to them and they said in in theory yeah you can list it here even though the forklift is in Ontario but then you know in order to sign the, li the listing contract you have to talk to the lo local territory manager of the auction and so I talked to that guy and he says, yeah, in theory it's it's allowed, but he says, I've been doing it for, you know, 30 years. He says, I don't recommend it. Basically, nobody will buy it like that because it's too far. 
So I said, what do you suggest? He says, uh, list it at the same auction where you bought it. And I said, okay. So I called that auction in Bolton, Ontario. In 500 meters, turn right onto Trans-Canada Highway, Alberta 1 East. Signs for Trans-Canada Highway, 16th Avenue Northeast. And they said, well, you still need to talk to that guy because you're based in Calgary. You still need to sign the contract with the guy. And so this time... Turn right onto Trans-Canada Highway, Alberta 1 East. Signs for Trans-Canada Highway, 16th Avenue Northeast. And so I called the manager because, again, I keep getting uh, messages on, uh, on uh, Facebook. But people that are interested in buying this but they want to see it and i said i cannot just fly over there to show you unless you're serious you know or something right and then uh, i figured okay what what's going to happen if i relist it at the auction do i have to be there because last time the manager said that i cannot let any strangers know the entrance gate code if if i'm showing you on alberta one east for one kilometer if i'm showing the uh, forklift to somebody they ha I have to escort them and so I called him today I said okay what's gonna happen if I you know I want to put it back uh, to the auction you still want me to be there or like how does it work I said if if the truck I just in 600 meters take the Alberta 201 north stony trail exit yeah if I'm just sending a truck right to pick up the forklift and to my surprise, the guy says, uh, actually, no. If you, uh, if you let us know what company will be coming, you know, like, tell us, you know, like, a the Alberta 201 North exit. like ABC tracking, whatever is coming. He says, it's fine. We'll just let them in. You don't have to tell them the entrance. On Alberta 201 North for 10 kilometers. You don't have to tell them the entrance gate code. Uh, so that's fine. I said, hey, but then I, I, I finally got the contract from Richie Brothers because nobody could tell me how much they charge and when I talked to customer service I said so how much do you charge sellers I know for the buyers it was like 10% of the of the sell of the buying price uh, and they said well they don't want to tell me the number they're like well that's what you have to discuss with the with the um, with the territory manager okay and so they sent me the contract and right there it says anything over 3,000 Canadian they charge 12 percent uh, anything less than 3,000 they charge 25 percent okay so basically if this thing sells let's say for 5k they're gonna charge me 600 bucks so I'm gonna lose that and I'll have to pay probably a thousand bucks just to get it to the auction and I would need the racker to get this because it's stuck in the sand right and now this guy here is offering me now five thousand dollars okay and to why I started talking about this I remember I said today's an important day is because this guy said uh, he has a clock key and he just wants to test drive it because they already saw it that's why he was interested they they walked around they saw it but uh, they wanted my permission to uh, basically check it out and he says he can pull it out with his truck because he has his own uh, forklift and uh, and yesterday we talked about this he says uh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow night which is now and of course Ontario is two hours forward so if it's uh, five o'clock here it's already seven over there so I sent him a couple of messages on Facebook so any news did you like it and when I was leaving the dealer I still didn't hear from him so so basically, if he doesn't buy it, I think what I'll have to do is I'll uh, I'll still fly over there. Uh, I'm gonna set up one day or maybe two days 
let's say next week you know let's say wednesday and thursday and i i'll message everybody on facebook who messaged me before about this machine i'll say okay i'm gonna be there next week wednesday thursday if you want to see it please come in here and see it and so if nobody buys it i'll just hire a truck basically cut my losses and uh, sign the contract with the auction and the auction happens uh, July 5th July 5th and the, the problem with the auction is with all Ritchie Brothers auctions is that they are all unreserved which means that boy this thing has a blind uh, blind spot indicator cool uh, the problem is that if somebody buys it let's say if there's no buyers and the attendance is low and there's no interest online somebody can in theory somebody can buy this for like 500 bucks you know so that means that i would lose a lot of money on this but all in all i'm still happy i did this honestly it's kind of like taking a training course you know like you pay somebody to teach you how to buy and sell machinery right so nothing's wrong with that so i just paid the auction to kind of teach me and I paid the market to teach me how to do this but I'm still very interested I it's probably you know buying and selling is my favorite thing to do after photography and video you know I'm always buying and selling something In three kilometers, take exit 68 for Country Hills Boulevard. and I think I'm good at it because uh, you know those cameras and lenses I bought I sold everything for a profit except I still have one lens that I cannot get rid of that I paid uh, 600 bucks for I have one guy who's asking asking me to sell it to him for $500 <laughs> and I paid 600 I said no I said can you do 600 no it's out of my budget like I said this lens brand new is 900 Canadian honest to God so this lens 900 right that's why I bought it for 600 I thought I could sell it maybe for seven but nobody wants it because it's a APS-C camera lens like for a small crop sensor Sony camera it's a very specific lens basically I should not have bought it So that's what's happening so i do have some hope that this guy will like the forklift and take it off my hands for five grand then i don't have to fly there if it doesn't happen i fly i'll show the machine to those few people that were interested if those don't buy i'll i'll take it to the auction so and then this weekend maybe I can go to the public land shoot some targets you know by the way yeah on this thing that the trunk is not 600 meters take exit 68 for Country Hills Boulevard the trunk is not very big but the rear seats fall down and they said actually that when the seats fall down it's actually give you a bigger take exit 68 thank you left of the fork it gives you a bigger storage area than in the big Jeep you know the bigger one like full-size what they call them Jeep not Wrangler but the Jeep other one yeah I can really see myself enjoying this little vehicle you know no not sure about mods maybe I'll put some fancy exhaust system on it we'll see maybe some spin tech you know i think on the, with these small engines uh spin tech sounds pretty good uh, when i had a mazda mazda 2.0 four cylinders just regular no turbo i put a spin tech on it and it sounded pretty awesome but of course i know myself sooner or later i'm gonna start missing that v8 sound especially here in alberta a lot of people drive drive big trucks like that Ford F-150 or you know Ram right and of course V8 you cannot beat you know that exhaust sound and of course my Hellcat the Hellcat 
even with the factory exhaust like when the guy was leaving right that was steven driving away the hellcat when he was leaving i was just you know enjoying that sound of that powerful v8 by the way uh little insurance i only gave him the black key I did not give him the two, the two red keys. I asked him about this. I said, do you want me to give you all the keys or you okay with just the black key? And he says, uh, yeah, just the black key is okay. Like, man, that guy is just driving right on my bumper. Like here, there's always a lineup because there's a stop, stop sign and there's no no light and there's quite a lot of traffic here I'm not sure what I just switched it to auto right Why is it so high? Eighteen eighteen degrees outside. So hopefully this will be my new vehicle. Oh and also I was so yeah I called that guy, asked him to uh, uh, the GMC I asked him to uh, give me back the thousand dollars I gave him and the guy called me at around 1230 and he asked for my credit card number and then I got a receipt saying that Turn left onto Country Hills Boulevard Northeast. I got a receipt saying that uh, I got the money and so these guys I just gave him thousand dollars and uh, when I was leaving, they were saying, can you pay a bit more if the bank asks for that? I said, okay, I'll give you another thousand. But some people might wonder, you know, why I wouldn't buy like something cheap, like for 10,000 bucks. But first off over here, for 10,000 bucks, that would be... That would be something with like 200,000 kilometers on the odometer. And with used vehicles, like, yeah, if you buy it for cash, it's a good thing. But if you, if you do financing, and I need financing because of the big gap in what I owe on the Hellcat and what they offer, right? I do need financing. And so with a used vehicle, the rates are much worse. Right, where if you have good credit, see like these GMC guys were trying to get me into this 1.99% program, but it did not work. But that's possible only with new vehicles. Some, and sometimes, of course, you can get 0% financing, right? But used ones, it's like 9, 10, 12%, you know? And that's why I don't like used vehicles you take a hit during the first couple of years but then the resale value is better especially since you know I don't, don't drive them that much like I think the highest mileage I ever had was on my Charger because I really enjoyed that car this Dodge Charger RT with 5.7 engine I think when I was um, when I traded it in for the Hellcat I think I had like 24,000 kilometers and that was a 22 no wait 21 yeah so like in two years i put 24,000 kilometers on it. so basically i do like a thousand kilometers a month max but here maybe i'll be doing more especially with a car like this 
that's good on gas because I can go to mountains and Banff is uh, 100 kilometers away. In 400 meters, turn right onto 60th Street Northeast. So yeah, I would be super happy with this. And, and it's like I mentioned, yeah, with a Hellcat because it's so expensive, you don't want to drive it, right? But this, it's a much cheaper vehicle, two liter turbo, much better on gas. I wouldn't have any issues driving Turn this. Right onto 60th Street Northeast. You know, enjoying enjoying the car, going to public land, going hiking. In 300 meters, continue straight to stay on 60th Street Northeast. Going into Head mountains. West on Country Hills Boulevard Northeast. Okay, this In is 200 meters. Turn right onto Skyview Circle Northeast. Yeah, this is the plaza that I frequent. Because this is where they have a uh, couple of banks. Turn right Skyview Circle Northeast. They have a couple of banks. Meters, turn right onto Skyview Ranch Boulevard Northeast. And they are my favorite uh, shawarma place here, called Jaffa Shawarma. Just gonna stop, pick up some wine celebrate maybe it's a bit too early i don't know basically i said what's going on with the bank like i know my income now is of course lower than last year but i've been paying crazy monthly payments for the hellcat never missed a payment so now this is like i said 40 45 percent less and they're having issues and he says well they looked at your they looked at your, um, you know, history, and it looks like you have a lot of loans. And I'm thinking, what loans? Uh, and then I remembered, yeah, I, I, I had to borrow from my line of credit a couple of times. Like I bought the Hellcat. I mean Hellcat. I bought the forklift, right? I bought those uh, cameras and lenses. I borrowed three grand there, five grand there, but then I'm I'm paying it back, right? So I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, this also this uh, Jeep is much more. Wait a second. I cannot see anything. Where's the lines? Huh. It doesn't show you. Okay, you see there's a front camera, a rear camera. Interesting. Okay, this is it. This is what I wanted to show you guys. This nice little nicely equipped Jeep oh that's why that one was closed that's why it was blowing so hard here Oh, this is closing. And this is open. Well, I like it.